Hey guys, it's Angelo and today we're having a look at corruption items and which effects you'll want to be using in the new post nerf corruption environment of patch 8.3. Many corruption effects have seen changes or nerfs in the past couple of weeks and now with the PvE environment somewhat stable we can safely discuss which effects scale well with the Shadow Priest, why you should be using them and which perhaps are not as good as you might think. Now, when producing this video a couple of days ago, I noticed that another priest, whom I watch frequently because she produces great content for all of us, had covered this topic with her take on it, so if you want to have another point of view, please be sure to check out Nayel's channel and her video with the link in the description box below. Now, if you too want to join the discussion, be sure to do so in the comment section below or join our Discord server, where you can share thoughts with other priests from the community with the link also in the description. Good. That being said, and without any further ado, let's go right ahead and have a look. First and foremost, I want to go into detail with something really important, because I've been reading about it a lot and there seems to be a lot of misconception here. When deciding on which corruptions effect to choose from, there are a few things you need to consider. Obvious things like whether or not the fight is multi-target or single target, the amount of corruption you can play with without it overwhelming you, and of course the corruption's damage output. Now, when looking at corruption values, especially when looking at their simulations over at Raidbots or in the Warcraft Priest GitHub, what we want to aim for is gaining the highest possible damage per one point of corruption. When following this idea, the choice of which corruption to pick actually doesn't just boil down to playing with infinite stars like many people think, but instead many other corruption effects. For example, per one point of corruption, gushing wounds will give you 216 damage per second. The percentual crit stat gain, where you'll gain 12% more crit from all sources, called severe, gives you around 200 damage per second and so on. You should see the list on screen now anyways. When looking at this, it's clear that you want to be playing with Gushing Wounds and the Percentual Crit Stat gain if possible, or the Percentual Haste gain, which is also good. Infinite Stars is a topic which we need to discuss very specifically. Yes, Infinite Stars is a good corruption effect to have, however, its simulated damage is actually not what you'll most likely be seeing in any encounter unless it's an incredibly strict single target encounter, like Shadar the Insatiable. Infinite Star's damage is heavily reliant upon the debuff stacking on the boss, meaning you will definitely want 10 stacks in order to deal its full damage potential. This will be highly unlikely when facing more than one enemy, as Infinite Stars will try to either spread onto other targets, therefore never fully stacking up on one, or will trigger stacks on your actual target as many of your spells or rather will not trigger stacks in your actual target as many of your spells will be splitting onto other enemies meaning its chance of procking on your main target will basically be skipped or missed. I hope I'm making sense to you, now I'm pretty sure that everyone who's playing with infinite stars currently knows exactly what I'm talking about because this happens very frequently. Infinite Stars also scales with Corrupted Item's item level, meaning an item level 430 belt for example with Infinite Stars rank 3 on it will be far behind other higher item level alternatives like Severe rank 3 for example on an item level 460 or 475 belt, even so in single target situations. This essentially means that with our current gear levels, you'll only want Infinite Stars on an item level 460 item or higher possibly 445 depending on your item level and what you will sim with it, but will only be using it in single target no matter which item level you'll have it with. Good, now that all of that is cleared up, our choice of corruption effects should become a lot more clean cut. In single target situations, and I mean complete single target situations, you will want to be going with either of the following corruption effects. Infinite Stars, Gushing Wounds, Twisted Appendage, Void Ritual, but only on rank 3 and if you're not the only one in your group using it, or Percentual Crit, so severe. You'll also want to try and fit in a haste proc if you can. These effects are not ranked as it's impossible to really ensure that you'll have all of them just the way you like them, so don't view this as a ranking, but as your competitive options. In multi-target situations, you will definitely want severe, gushing wounds, haste or crit procs, void withdrawal, 
or the Twisted Appendage, of course, on rank 3. These will be the corruptions you'll definitely want to aim for, but not having these and having to fill the slots that you don't have anything with other effects is fine. For a full list of effects, of course, or the DPS gains you'll have with them, I leave a link to the Warcraft Priest GitHub in the description box below. And a special thanks to everyone involved in updating and theorycrafting those simulations for the rest of us to use and see. Finally, let's talk about something which is actually very important to mention, and that is how much corruption will you want to be playing with? Honestly, the answer is quite simple. You'll want to try to stay beneath the specific corruption breakpoints, depending on what you can handle, on the fight, and the overall damage intake. The first really relevant breakpoint comes at 40 corruption, which is when you'll spawn a thing from beyond. In a typical raid setting, that'll be easily manageable with good healers, meaning you can go higher. Your next breakpoint is at 60 corruption, which is when you will also suffer from the cascading disaster, meaning that once struck by a thing from beyond, you will immediately trigger the Eye of Corruption and the Grasping Tendrils. Exceeding this breakpoint is something I do not advise you doing, meaning that you will never want to go higher than 59 corruption. Personally, I'm running with 40 corruption, with the severe corruption on rank 3 twice, 1 haste proc, 1 crit damage and healing increase of 2% as well. So again, be sure to either stay beneath 40 corruption, or a maximum of 39, or of course beneath 60 corruption, so a maximum of 59 and you'll be fine. Ultimately, it boils down to what you can handle and how competent your healers or rather you and your entire raid are, as well as how aware you are of the incoming effects. Things are also dependent on your use of the legendary cloak, so never forget to utilize it when needed. Alright, I hope that I was able to shed some light on the use of corruption, which effects to aim for and to play with, and what important factors to keep in mind when considering corruption. Let me know what you think. How much corruption are you currently playing with? If there are any interesting effects I did not cover in this video, but you really feel are strong, be sure to let me know in the comments below, or join our Discord server, where we discuss these things and so much more on a daily basis. Also, if you have a question to ask me, be sure to ask away in the comments below, or join the Ask Angelo Discord channel, as I'll be picking a new round of questions on Wednesday, which we'll answer on Friday of this week. Now, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if this video helped you out, please leave a like, and if you'd like to see more of my content in the future, feel free to subscribe. Special thanks to my supporters over at Patreon and on Discord. Now have a good one, my friends, and I will see you all in the next one. Yeah.